G'day folks and welcome to Gourmet Shed episode 36 creating backgrounds. Now last week I probably put the cart before the horse and showed you how to print out your backgrounds using post eraser and uh, on reflection that's probably <laughs> the wrong way to go about it. I should have shown you how to do this part of it first and uh, what happened was that uh, once I posted the uh, last week's video onto uh, platform one I had some questions from uh, members asking what program I use to create my backgrounds and how I go about it etc so I thought that uh, really I should go into that this week. So I've got uh, a little tutorial, I sort of fly through it uh, just showing you quickly parts of the program. Uh, sometimes you may need to pause the uh, image and uh, rewind and, and have another look at it because I don't explain everything uh, really uh, down to the fine detail, I'm just sort of skimming over it just to give you a rough impression of it. Um, however, I would encourage you to uh, use whatever uh, software program you have for uh, manipulating images and I would encourage you to go into that and just play about with it. That's the way you learn, that's the way I learn and uh, th that will stand you in good stead. So uh, first thing we'll do is um, run you through this little tutorial and uh, at the end of it there's um, a manipulation of a background, uh, blending two pictures together. So we'll do all that first and uh, there will be also after that a more detailed explanation on how to use the clone tool. So uh, let's get into that first. Right folks, the first thing we'll do is open um, Photo Filter and to get a better idea of just how some of the things work we'll open a, a sample picture just and we'll just play around with it a bit. Now when you go up to the uh, bar and so on you'll see all sorts of tools and um, the thing to bear in mind is this little arrow here will actually get you back to the default setting for the tools on the side there. And when we go along the top bar here, we've got contrast, we've got gamma correct, saturation, uh, etc. All the various tools that you would get with most photo editing programs. Uh, dust reduction is good for uh, restorations. You can sharpen the, the photo, put text in there. And uh, you can also... Uh, Check out the size of the image. Uh, you can actually change the size of the image in this uh, drop down box here. And uh, you can read it in inches or centimeters or percentages or pixels or whatever. Now, I would suggest you play with all these things uh, just to understand them. And uh, I'll show you what can happen here. You can see we're changing the contrast here. Uh, and now we'll change the gamma correct. You can see how it brightens up there and then we'll take it back again. Saturation, you can increase the color uh, to ridiculous levels if you want to. Uh, but this can, all these are handy tools if you need to change things. Uh, you can see the grayscale will immediately change it into a black and white photograph if you like. Uh, what else have we got here? Let's have a look. Now we go down to, let's see, try tarnish. You can see there's a bit of a bit of color there in a black and white photo. Now, um, colorized, we'll try blue. All these are, are sort of gimmicks and, and they're good if you're moving around, mucking about with uh, uh, photographs, especially for uh, artistic effects. For example, when you go into the filters, you can play around with the watercolor effect. Uh, one of my favorites is the uh, comic strip, which is very handy. Takes a little while to process some of these things. Now, if we go back into your comic strip again, you can see that you can actually uh, change the settings. We'll increase the threshold, and maybe we'll add black pencil in, and uh, we'll try that one. Yes, and you can see the, the result you get there. It does look like a comic book, actually, which is a good one. Right. 
So yes, that's what it's all about, folks. Is is playing with the settings and um, getting an idea of what you can do. So what we'll do now is um, try something with, um, say, a brick wall. Now this is an interesting little tool that I'll show you here. Uh, this image was taken from one of the free texture sites and it's obviously a stone wall. Uh, it's only a smallish image but we can change the uh, the effect of the color if you like by mucking around with the settings I showed you before. We can even make it look more like sandstone there by changing the saturation and uh, the contrast etc. All sorts of things. Make it look like a, a grey stone wall possibilities are uh, quite enormous actually. Now if you wanted to make uh, a sheet of this to print out, if you copy this single image here and then uh, paste it special and assemble to the right it puts a copy of that image beside the original one there. Now you can keep going with this as we will. We can add another one in and uh, to um, make it even easier we can just copy what's there now and then we'll paste that next to it so it's doubled its size there straight away it's quite big now if we copy what is there now which is a, a good size and then we'll go through the assembly process again but this time we'll change the settings and add it below you can see how we're starting to create basically a page of stone wall. Um, you've got to be careful that you don't get um, a bit of repetition in the image, but uh, you know it's not too hard to get about. Now, for the purposes really of this video, we we should look at landscapes, uh, creating a, a landscape. So the first thing we will look at is maybe this image here, and we're looking specifically at the size and more particularly at the height of the images that we may want to join together. These, uh, this one on the right and the one on the far left are similar in, so in height. So we might work with those two. So we'll open one. Now these are pretty big so it takes just a bit to load. So we'll load the first one of uh, uh, Mr. Brunel's bridge there. And uh, what we'll do now is open the other one and uh, these pictures are not related in any way at all they're from different areas of, uh, of England however we're going to join the two of them together by copying this second one and we'll use the assembly uh, method we used earlier and we'll place it to the right of the bridge Now you can see the difference in the height shows up with the black bar at the bottom of the bridge there. Uh, you can also see there's a bit of colour variation in the blue in the sky. You can see how the tree finishes there. We've got that black area at the bottom. We've got a bit of work to do because, uh, you know, we've got to match all these things up and make it look like a, a realistic landscape, not just two bits stuck together like that. Uh, so. The great tool for doing this is the clone tool. And uh, so we click on the clone tool and you can pick a size or an area that you wish to copy. Uh, I've made a boo boo there, but no, you can see the little circle, that's the size of the area that we're going to copy. So um, that's uh, set on 100. So we just um, basically what you do is you hold it over the area that you uh, want to uh, copy and uh, just changing the settings there. You hold it over the area you want to copy, you push the control button and uh, a little uh, symbol comes up and then you click left click on your cursor and you can uh, start copying. You can see I've changed the area there again. You can see the little icons come up. I keep moving around the, the um, area that I select. I change it all the time instead of just letting it do its own thing. Now here I've gone for this bit. You can see I've selected that tree just above there. 
and I've changed it again, constantly changing it to sort of uh, not have this re repeat image coming through all the time. So we just uh, go about filling in the black there and uh, constantly changing the uh, area that it's picking up on so you get a bit of variation in there. Now you can see I've picked up a bit of shadow there so I'll go back and fix that and uh, blend it over. It's 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 a, like doing a drawing yourself actually um, or, or changing a drawing or a painting whatever. So and you've got to think about it a bit you know as you can see I've come in from the right there I've picked up some of that area on the right to try and sort of uh, make it look as though it all should be there. In actual fact it's just copying parts of this picture that's already there. It's uh, it's uh, crazy stuff really but that's how it works and uh, when we get up to where the two pictures join that's where we'll have to get a bit creative so we're just really filling in this black area at the moment and then we'll we'll get into the tricky stuff once we get over there we're nearly there now so it shouldn't be too long so you can see the the clone tools just picked up a little bit of the right hand image and brought it over the, the join there so we'll do a bit more of that but um, maybe we'll work on the tree a bit first and uh, sort of uh, create uh, a bit more tree, make it look a bit more like a real tree instead of just the tree that's cut off at the join. And uh, I sometimes use the uh, diffuse uh, setting with the clone tool. Um, it, it's uh, it, it throws up little specks as opposed to a, a nice clean line. Um, it's the sort of thing again that you practice with and get a feel for it. It's a bit like um, compare it to airbrushing or drawing with a, with a with a ruler, a very precise system. The airbrush sort of smooths over areas. Well, this is the sort of effect that we're doing here. We're trying to blend these two scenes together. So I'm dragging over a bit of the right hand side now to the left to sort of look like it's part of it. One of the issues we'll have, of course, is up the top where you can see where the cloud finishes. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that as well. And uh, we'll just have a bit of a squeeze and see what we can do here. Now, the, the hill just on the right of the tree, I think, is too high. We'll have to do a bit of work on that as well. Um, so, yeah, we'll copy a bit of sky and sort of get rid of that bit of hill and I'm still on the diffuse setting so you can see that it's leaving a, a few specks there but we can get rid of those once we clean it up a bit yeah that looks a bit more like it's the real thing and we'll we'll try a bit of cloud as well and uh, we'll sort of spread that out a bit in um, the pictures I've done for my railway I actually cut the sky out but uh, with that bridge there, it would be extremely difficult to do that. You'd, you'd finish up with blue areas uh, just above the roadbed, and uh, it, it would be a mess actually to do and try and do that. So this sort of picture, we we'll leave the sky in, and you can see I've just um, selected an area of the sky then, and. Uh, transferred the, the color of the sky from one area to the other so it's all even all the way across the same blue now we're picking up some more cloud trying to uh, bring that over to the right a bit we'll try the precise setting but uh, it's a bit too sharp on the edges and we'll have to use some other tools to sort of soften that out so we use the diffuse setting again try and soften that a bit that's not too bad still looks a bit too neat so you can see folks it's all about playing with tools and sort of seeing what you can do this uh, smudge tool uh, might be good just up around the top of the tree here and on, on parts of the cloud it's okay it's not too bad it's sort of softening the edge of the cloud there. I might pick up a bit of the tree though when I get close to it, which will be no good. Yes, that's actually happening. You can see I'm dragging a bit of the color from the tree into the cloud. 
that's not real good. We might have to add a bit more tree in there to sort of disguise that. But um, yeah, once you get up into the cloud area, it sort of blurs it and smudges it and uh, just makes it look like it was always there. So we'll go back to the clone tool, pick up some more tree and sort of fix up that bit there I just mucked up. And uh, it's not too bad actually. Uh, yep. So you can see the possibilities uh, with this uh, sort of program. You can uh, start stitching photos together of landscapes that are really not even related and start blending it together into something that looks uh, quite feasible. So, uh, yeah, I'm just cleaning up the, the top of the hill there, getting a, a cleaner line along there. Adding some foliage in and touching up the tree. It's coming along pretty good, I think. Oops, picked up a bit of the building there, so we'll have to get rid of that. Just add a bit more tree over that. That'll do. Now, we'll have a bit of a look at it. So, is that believable? <laughs> it looks okay. Um, yeah, as crazy as it seems, that to me looks okay. What do you guys think? So, uh, we'll just do a couple more touch ups. Spread a bit more of the right hand side into the left hand side, and uh, I think we should use the diffuse tool a bit as well. It's a bit too neat there. Just a bit too neat. Yeah, you can really get a better idea when you zoom in on the, on the photo, and you do that by just rolling the mouse wheel. You can see if we make this diffuse here, it sort of adds these little dark green specks in, and sort of um, doesn't give you such a definite line on the image. That's not too bad. Yeah, we can do a few more touch-ups. So you know, if you get if you get sick of doing this, if you've got a massive image, you can just uh, stop at any time and just save your work, and uh, come back to it and continue on at any other time. Uh, yeah, you don't have to do it all in one fell swoop. So we're looking pretty good there. So what we'll do is. Uh, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Yep. So, you know, when you're done, all you have to do is uh, save the image and, and something of this size will be considerable. So it might take a little while to save it. So, yeah, just, you know, the normal process, just give it the name that you want so you can find it again in you know, and put it in an area where you, you know, uh, know and you would keep these things. In my case, it's landscapes, so... I can find it again. So and that's that's all there is to it. And of course you can use poster razor to print out this sort of thing. That's the video we covered last week, so so there you go. I always save it best quality too, by the way. So yeah, it's gonna take a while to save that. Anyway, that's how you do it. Now we've done that. Uh obviously the, the best images to use are panoramic images. And you can see by the huge pixel count on the uh, image size, they're, um, they're the ones to use. You can always make a big image smaller and still have great detail. If you get a small image and try and make it bigger, uh, it starts going pixely on you. And also if you try and join a number of small images together, uh, you're creating a lot of work there. You're better off having two or three or four, depending on the size of your, of your railway, better off having two or three or four very large images and just having those two or three or four joints or whatever you need uh, as opposed to possibly ten um, if you're using small images so yeah um, seek out the large panoramic pictures and uh, you need to uh, be careful of the height as I've shown you in the video uh, the width is no problem you can always um, shorten the, the picture if you want to, but uh, the height 
can make a bit of a difference. There are other ways around the height, but basically if you start with two images that are close uh, in their size, um, it's not too difficult as you can see from what I did with that background. So now a, uh, a more detailed look at the, the clone tool because uh, I did skim over that quite quickly. So we'll have a look at this little section here. Okay, folks, uh, to, act to activate the clone tool, you need to move over to the right hand side of the screen, click on the icon, and then you will see the drop down box with the size of the tool. Uh, in this case, it's 50. And that looks like the circle looks like there. And you can change the size uh, to set sizes. That's three. That's rather small. Uh, however, if you zoom in on the photograph, the size of the tool increases as you zoom in. So it's all proportional to the zoom. So this is a bit small for our uh, exercise today. So we'll um, show you some more sizes here. Right, we'll pick up uh, 50. That looks like that. It's probably a bit small. We'll use 100. And to activate the clone tool, you need to place the cursor over the area you want to copy and then hold down the control key and then left click on the mouse and then release the control key. You can see that the um, image is being transferred rather poorly across to the left there and you're getting these round bubbles of image being placed there and it's the same if we go out to the right hand side of the, uh, the image there however we'll unselect fixed and that allows the uh, image to be transferred more effectively because the cursor will follow your path on the image and uh, it will move about as you move about as you can see here now really this is no good for um, doing buildings etc so what we'll have to do is get rid of this work that we've done here and I'll show you a more precise way of copying that. So we'll get rid of all that. So to get a more precise uh, job we access the polygon icon there and now you click where you want to start, line up the first line, click where you want to finish then move on to your next line click where you want to finish move across again, click where you want to finish and up to where you started, click again and you'll see the hash box appears now if you access the clone tool again and select the part that you want to copy whatever you copy will only be placed into the item, in the area you selected there so we could have gone a bit further back with the clone key, so we'll move it back there. And you can see it only stays within the area you selected. And it, wherever I move it, it won't do it. It will only work in the selected area. Now if we get rid of the selection, there you have it. It's as simple as that, folks. Okay, folks. Uh, that's it for this week. and. Uh... You can uh, revisit uh, Post Eraser if you like and uh, see how we print out that sort of background. But uh, yes, that's all we have for you at the moment. So I'll tell you what, I'll see you next week and, and start printing those backgrounds. Cheers. Gormo.